All right, it's the rundown, the 6th of March. It's very much March. A lot of college basketball, buzzer beaters. It's crazy. It's chaos. It's the best time of the year. Best time of the year. Uh, Jeff D. Lowe, Clem, and White Sox Dave. White Sox Dave uh, wanted us on 15 minutes early, and he uh, he was the last one here. <laughs> uh, I said 10.50. It's 10.45. That's Let's exactly confirm. Hold on. If you said that, I'll shut up. If you said that, I'll take it back. You did say 1050. Okay. Okay. He, he also said he's ready when you guys are, and then every single other person on the podcast. Okay, that's true. On. Okay. No, I take that, it. Okay. I read okay, it back. That was the most instant reaction that a group of people has ever had together to get on a Zoom at one time. I, all I did was go to the bathroom, like very briefly, number one, not number two. So um, I was 30 seconds late to your huge mistake. You said early to work from home guys though. So like, we're all yeah. like, we're here ready to go. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, all right. That, that, that's my one given uh, white Sox, Dave shit for a second. I'm sure there'll uh, be high noon more opportunities. High noon. No, no, no. no. I, I, I hope we all agree on a couple things today. There's two big things. I hope we agree on high noon though. I know we agree on this. High noon is fantastic. And the uh, Dave, the El Prez pack. Featuring uh, what I think is the best flavor. It's the new tangerine flavor. I think it's the best flavor of high noon. Whenever it's in the office, whenever I see it, uh, there's never any left. Like never. Like I was there. We were there for a client event recently in Chicago. I was like tangerine. They're like nope. So I, I think people agree with me. I think orange uh, related things get a bad rap sometimes. Uh, the tangerine. My only thing is needs to be a solo pack. That's all I'll buy. But the patch of your great as well. Pineapple pear. Those are Dave's favorite flavors. Um, all made with real vodka, real juice. Uh, fantastic. Locale. It's great. Um, yeah, we were down packs in are only for a limited time. And there's a QR code. You can get Dave, a virtual Dave, with you oh. while you're drinking it. Um, uh, visit high to find the El Prez pack nearest you, but also, I mean, high noon everywhere as it should be. It's yeah. We were down in Arizona last week for spring training stuff and the, the high noon was flowing and the El Prez pack, that's what it's called. Correct. The El Prez yep. pack. Uh, I was introduced to passion fruit. My goodness. Was yeah, it that I actually believe that's Dave's favorite. And I'm, a, I'm typically like you, Jeff, an orange flavored guy, like anything orange citrusy, I'm all in on. I don't even know what a passion fruit is, but I know that it's delicious. Thanks to honey. So <laughs> it is. It's great. Uh, fantastic. Um, real vodka, real juice. Shout out to high noon as always. Uh, let's start out with this. Did they remind me? I forget. Cause I saw something around yesterday. Cause gas blew up the rundown yesterday. Did they talk about Arch Manning on the rundown yesterday. I forget. I did Somebody not chi- see it, but um, voice of God guy- chime in very briefly. Yes. And then, yeah, okay, let's, let's 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 talk about Arch Manning real quick. So NCAA football 25, the first game in 10 years coming out this summer. The hype is crazy around it. Crazy. There's there uh, Kirk Herbstreit confirming multiple broadcast teams. The NCAA football franchise was always separate of Madden. And then they're promising things that make it sound like we're going to get what we used to have and hopefully better with so many new things, the playoff, you know, NIL. There's so many great things. Arch Manning seems to be the only person who opted out of this game. Uh, He will not opt in. With NIL, players can opt in to be in the game. Obviously, that's the whole reason the game went away was the likeness shit. And he clarified his comments saying that he won't opt into the video game until he's the guy at Texas. That's so fucking lame, right? It's 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 the lamest thing on earth. Now, he's a Manning. Obviously, his name carries a ton of weight in football circles. Doesn't matter if it's college, SEC football, or professional NFL football. Chief said this perfectly yesterday, and I think it can be boiled down to as brief as this. Just say that, because I'm pretty sure they're all getting a uniform amount of $600. Yep. Uh, or $600-something. And a copy coffee, of the game. And a copy of the game. Just say that that is not worth your NIL, your name image like this, that you should be holding out for, I don't know, a million dollars, whatever X amount crazy obscene number is. Um, That's the real reason, right? It's not so we can focus on. uh, It has to be. Well, I like that the the comment had to be clarified because the way the original comment read, it sounded like he thought like he had to play the game weekly and like along with actual, he's like, I got to focus on real football. It's like, well, you're not. You don't, you don't play, play. <laughs> like yeah. for us to play. 
Um, yeah. I'm a I'm a Giants guy, so I'm gonna. I basically like you're a Giants guy now. I'm a Manning guy. I'm the whole Manning family. Oh, okay, so you okay? I have to I have to defend my guy here, Arch Manning. He's obviously Eli's nephew, and I like it. He's focused on just you know, uh, like this is the motivation he needs to you know get the starting job from a guy who brought Texas back. Texas is officially back, right? Across the panel right. here, we're saying they're back. Yeah, I'm a big that's, Quinn Ewers guy. I like Quinn Ewers. That's that's the thing, man. I think, you know, he, uh, Arch was probably hoping he was going to enter the draft, just get out of his hair. And it also kind of puts, like, the feet to the fire of the coach. Who the fuck is the Texas coach? I've lost track. There were so many coaches. Dark. Okay. So yeah. he – now his feet are to the flame for people that want to play as Arch Manning. Doesn't really mean a ton in the grand scheme of things. He's more focused on winning games in real life than video games. But it's just one more thing to get the people in Arch Manning. Hey, if Arch starts, at least we can play with him in the game. Are we just going to get QB 10 now? Is that who it's going to be? Is he going to be gonna like be a, it, I think what I read was it'll be a very different name, very different likeness. To, and I, apparently you can't you can't edit players that I opt out, I guess. I don't that know how it's all going to work. Is I assume creative players going to be in there? So... I, I always love when they really went above and beyond making a guy look like not the person he was. I remember Zach Randolph in like March Madness 2000 or whatever was a six foot 10 ginger that was right-handed. Could not be more different than the real well, Zach Randolph. NCAA football got so close to what people actually looked like by the end of it. Like Johnny football was Johnny football. And it just, it was to a point where like yeah. you kind of got wide ended. Um, also, I will say this too. Kind of a loser if you play with like the, Who's not? You gotta be. You gotta be playing with the mid, you know, with the smaller schools, right? With the group of five, you gotta be playing with like a mat. You want to do like maction. You're trying to get up in your franchise or in your dynasty mode with uh, with like these smaller schools, right? Jeff D. Lotus and play as Penn State. I'm shocked. Oh, you can't do that. All right, it's I respect that. That way, it's no. I mean, I I I think Clem, you were on that snake draft where you drafted video games. I they all blend together for me. I am not a sports video game guy. I like fantasy shit, blowing shit up. Sports, I get bored of it too easily because it's, I don't know, it's just redundant and repetitive to me. But like the every single thing about this game, I think could be a complete and total home run. And if Arch Manning is such a, a, a dweeb that he doesn't want to take part in it, then fuck him. More fun for me. That's like whatever. I just hope they bring back Team Builder. Team Builder was one of the greatest features in the history of sports video games. You go I online and build the stadium, the jerseys. That was that was the best. When the when two thousand NCAA football like two thousand probably eight ish, I it was eerily close to my high school football stadium field and like the school in the background, the like trees surrounding it. It was weird how close you could get it to real life shit. And if you can yeah, give me team builder was the oh, team builder was awesome too in that first it was drop. Awesome. Um, you could you could do like a small you could do like an FCS school like a D two mm -hmm. school. Uh, I, I don't play tech. I'll play a Texas State instead of Texas. Get get those small schools up there. Um, I, I'm with Dave though. I'm not, and I'm, I am with you guys. Like when I play Madden for the most part, I try to be like a team that's in like the high seventies, low eighties. I just basically want a quarterback. A uh, tight end, a receiver, and a right. Like, just give me one all right guy at each position, and I'll just play with them. There is something you said about if you want to play as Texas, you're going to be Arch Manning just because you we've never fucking seen him actually play like a full game, right? So that was something I would play as a casual fan. Um, also, I will say this as a Manning guy, like everyone gave Eli shit for not wanting to go to the Chargers. I think he's kind of been proven right because they could never just get it right. They've had Breeze, oh, two Rivers, and Herbert. Yeah, and he won two Super Bowls in New York. So I think he did it right. Shout out to the old Road to the Heisman mode where your girlfriend would become hotter the better you were. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At your college, one of one of the all time that that won't be in the game, but that what an incredible feature that was. <laughs> why, why, Clem? Tell tell them why. You know the people on the coast. Let's just call it what it is. I, I don't I'm, know if on bring... both coasts, yeah. It starts with an L, ends in Ibs. <laughs> they ruin everything. Um, do you think Coach Dugs will be like a playable, like a selectable coach from the jump? He should be. If they he were should be there, he should be the replacement coach for any coach that doesn't uh, are is I actually don't know if coaches are in this. I don't think they are, but um that'd be very funny if it was just wherever there wasn't a coach that didn't want his like this is just Doug's. Just Doug's. <laughs> um moving on from college to high school. This is this is a pretty crazy video, and we have it, so we gotta talk about it. Uh New Jersey High School State semifinals, one of the best teams. I think routinely in New Jersey is Camden High School, right? Clem, do you know that? 
Yeah, I feel like they're usually in the mix. Camden's like guys, always monsters. What about go take it on a a, a classic shore town? If you know the Jersey Shore, Manasquan yep. Squan is is synonymous with with uh, a good a share house with your buddies. Uh, Manasquan uh, was down one with six seconds left. Had a bit of a, a, a tough three point heave. <laughs> Uh, but the putback went in with clearly enough time. Like, not even like, oh, I got to slow that down. Like, you can see it live. Um, and then after about five minutes, they reversed the call, said no basket, Camden won. Based on nothing, obviously. Based on just discussion. I mean... Well, this is crazy. Rico, Rico Bosco, obviously, um, also a shore guy, said uh, the refs made a business decision, which I've been reading a lot of comments about. It. People say that Camden is is coddled in New Jersey in terms of their basketball team um, and a lot of people to transfer in and out. I don't know how true that is, but I, maybe that's what Rico's getting at. This is crazy. Uh, justice for Squan. They got you fucking host. He's how are how are we in 2024 and we just can't go to replays? If they have the replay available, go to the replay if you can. It's clear it's fucking day. And if all things are equal, A, you're just like, it's like with the NFL, You can, if it's not enough to reverse the call, you keep the call, right? That's how it should be. The call it counted. They got it fucking right. And then if all other things are equal, go with the cool ass, awesome memory that will live in infamy forever. And there you go. It counts. They fucking win, and we have this this fucking viral moment. And I saw the coach already came out, and is uh, he's already like talking shit. I couldn't imagine being the coach of those kids, man. I'd be furious this morning. I mean, I'm sh I'm sure they have or they will protest it. I'm not sure to what. Yeah, Camden's twenty nine and two is obviously very good, but I'm not sure like what they can even do. Oh, I right. understand every high school basketball game probably can't have full replay. State semifinals, though, we got to get a camera set up to like the, the I mean, playoffs should have replay. Fucking like, check someone's cell phone in the stands. Just get the call right. It was so clear as day that there was a lot. I mean, obviously, with respect to the situation, there was a lot of time on the clock. And, and if you look at the 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 shot clock, it, it weirdly goes down like like two thirds of the second increments. <laughs> But when he sinks that shot, it said 0.5 left. It wasn't like 0.1. And, like, you had to really slow it down. You were watching it in plain sight. And there was time on the clock. It, like, I, I'm, I don't know if you guys played high school sports or not, but, like, my high school friend, I'm 35 years old. We talk about the last baseball game we played to go to state every time we're together still. And we lost that game, and it fucking crushed us to this day. And we didn't get ripped off by refs like this. This will last with these kids forever, especially the seniors. I don't know if they like went to state or the year before or not or whatever, but this will last with them for all their lives. And I feel bad that that got ripped off from them by the fucking refs. Now, you know I say sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I want to say like, I feel like we're going to say like this is one of the worst missed calls ever, yada, yada, yada. And is it like, are refs just getting worse? Because yeah. the NBA, every single night, there's like three just massive no calls, missed calls, bad calls, whatever it may be. Or is it like with the world where it's like, is the world getting worse or do we just everyone has a cell phone now and they can just record bad shit that happens? And I don't know which one it is because like 10, 20 years ago, we, we just hear about, you know, a few people might tell you this story if you ran into like a Manasquan alum or something like that. But like it's it's fucking it's wretched it's getting worse in every sport i feel it's not even just basketball football is getting worse baseball robot umps everyone asks for that every single day it's fucking it's a it's a fucking pandemic you know how many you know how many 24 year olds we got at barstool who just have this all day they're filming every <laughs> moment they can't find like 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 every moment's captured they can't find one kid for extra credit in that high school to film like a basketball game and be like hey go to the kid's mm -hmm. phone but just like one kid there, just like we do in the gambling cage. Just have a kid there every game, one kid for like extra credit in a class. He just sits there and does this. Refs need a replay to go and look at the phone. I don't know. That seems that seems simple. Oh, or, or it's kind of like for that. It's home court advantage. Like in this gym, we do not use replay. Like it's kind of like having a short a short porch with the Yankees, right? It's like you could just say that and the refs might, I, might... it's a neutral site though. It's Brielle oh, High School. It's another okay. short town. Yeah. Okay. So that makes crazy. A there. Yeah. Crazy. Um what else here? Uh, 
Josh Allen apparently ripped his pants uh, when he was getting out of a... Oh, we lost Dave. Did we lose Dave? Dave might have had a... Oh, we got him back. Is he back? I'm back. The internet just completely shut off. Nothing here. nothing more universal. Doesn't matter how state-of-the-art state of the, art the <laughs> Chicago office is, that Wi-Fi. Doesn't matter. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't. You could. You the the sh- there could be the barstool Burj Khalifa office, and the Wi Fi would still be bad. It doesn't yeah. matter. Um, Josh Allen ripped his pants. Um, he was getting shit online. He got out of the car with his, I think, alleged girlfriend. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. Whatever. With Haley Steinfeld, the actress and singer, and he ran out of the car into the hotel. Shout out Josh Allen. Um, played in the dozen in Vegas. Uh. And he he replied and he said, I ran. I wasn't being rude. I didn't hold the door because I, I ripped my pants. He didn't want his cheeks out. I don't blame him. I don't want my ass cheeks flailing out in Paris. Nope. That's a that's forever a moment. Like, yeah, that's, that's what he'll be known for online for, for t- at least 10. I mean, Dave, you know, the gum, the gum hanging out of your mouth. All it takes is one moment. One 30 second moment and it will <laughs> last with you until your death. So, yeah, I, I completely am on his side. It's like, what, what did you want him to do? Just stand there like ass cheeks catching some breeze Marilyn man like what like or Marilyn Monroe rather Marilyn Manson um <laughs> I it's it's I this is like the analogy I I had conjured up in my head it's like if you get pulled over and you got to take a really bad shit you're like officer I just gotta go I gotta take a shit like if I'm looking at the paparazzi and the cameras be like yo I know you got to do your job I got a big asshole in my and you're gonna see some ass cheeks so I gotta get the fuck out like well also Keep in mind too, Haley Steinfeld, a lot of fans, people mm-hmm. online love like these younger actresses and stars, and they don't, you know, they're not going to know Josh Allen for for football as much, and so they're going to know him as the ass cheeks out guy. Yeah, you don't want to be known as the ass cheeks out guy. Yeah, I. Uh, like right. I'll come out with it. I've ripped a pair of pants before. I, I don't think I will shock many people. I don't know if anyone else on the panel has. It's not something you want, like, your closest family members and friends to know, let alone a bunch of paparazzi people putting it on the internet. Now, I will say this. I have to kind of, like, this kind of goes to my Arch Manning thing. I now have to kind of, like, hate Josh Allen because he beat me in the dozen. So I feel like he's just stealing my fucking, like, Josh Allen's not ripping his pants. He has fucking professional tailors who give a little bit of wiggle room for him, too. This was just, he kind of just, like, what, what would be something to be embarrassing? I ripped my pants, and he took, like, something a fat person would actually use, like myself, and he took it for himself. It's disgusting. You're saying this, this is, he is, this is uh, cultural appropriation for people who are ripping their pants. Yes. Josh Allen in, you know, 20, 2018, before he got, like, Wyoming Josh Allen could rip his pants because he's probably wearing a shitty pair of pants, and he's an actual giant. Rich, billionaire Josh Allen, he has pants okay. that I would dream of that like they fluctuate, they give you a little extra cushioning, and they're married literally for Josh Allen. So fake news. Um also uh oh, we lost Dave lost again. That's <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, two guys working from home and a guy working in a eight billion dollar office. Who drops in? I tell you the, the Chicago <laughs> office, the Chicago office is unbelievable. It's amazing. It's... But no matter how much money Dan made, Stella Blue tomorrow could be the only coffee in the world. That Wi-Fi will still be bad. <laughs> it's how it goes. It compute in my head. Not much it does, doesn't... but like how we can't have a Zoom. Unbelievable. Internet. It, but Unreal. like the internet icon, like the Wi-Fi icon, it just shuts off. It just <laughs> I... Um. So I was going to... I was going to move on, by the way. So we had this on here. Dakota Johns talked about Madam Web, which I just want to know. I think it's the worst. I actually think it's the worst comic book movie ever made. I, I've officially declared it the worst comic book movie ever made, pound for pound. But we have breaking news from Dave Portnoy. He has ended the Clemmer stream. Oh. Um, however, however, he's keeping him in there. He's not telling him, apparently. I'll read the tweet from Dave. We're going to get into the Barstool stuff right now. A lot of streams happening lately. Dave said, I've just, he always said 11 minutes ago, I don't get what Clemmer was trying to do with the stream. Prove that he could bore people to death for 100 straight hours. It had like 350,000 live viewers on X, which was crazy. Um, and then Dave just said, I've decided to cut the Clemmer stream, but keep him in there anyway. This is too boring. Let him sleep to himself. He still has another like 50 hours in there. Christ. So how's he gonna? Is, does he have any contact at all with the outside world? 
No, and, and he's so so I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. Uh some people have been mad at him. Keegs very mad at him, called him a terrorist for he was unplugging a speaker that was that Vibs Vibs put a ton of planning into this. And I think there's been a lot of butting heads. Clemmer has not liked what he's done. He has not liked the challenges. He's given up on the challenges. Um, Vibs had this thing playing that was Frank singing Locked Up by Aiken, which is very funny. And Clemmer unplugged it. I'm locked up, you won't let me out. I'm locked up, you won't let me out. I'm locked up, you won't let me out. No, no, I cannot go. Locked up, you won't let me out. Locked up, you won't let me out. So it's been a lot of sleeping. He slept over 11 hours last night. Um, He's halfway through the 100-hour goal, and now he is not going to be on stream, and he's not going to be told that he's not on stream. Uh, but he's apparently people are, are pissed that he's being uncooperative and not fully embracing the challenges and such, which I know Vibs put a lot of time into um, and planned tough. I watched a good chunk of it yesterday. Uh, it, it's fun when he's like engaging with the camera and um, like he was counting rice. He was giving some like heavy, heavy stories like about his you know dad who had gone through cancer and stuff like that. But it was also like, he tells a good story. Clemmer is a good storyteller. I like Clemmer. I like just talking and bullshitting. Um, but then when I checked like, the next three times throughout the day, he was sleeping. That kind of just defeats the whole purpose. And I understand you have to sleep at some point in solitary confinement. But I feel like the Vib stuff is what would have kept people coming back for more. You're seeing a guy count grains of rice. You're seeing right. a guy make a puzzle that is clear, which is like they're just trying to break him, basically. And I guess a solitary confinement stream would be cool. But it doesn't really make sense if you're just watching a guy sleep and like piss. Yeah. Also, yeah. like he thought he shit himself. I, I kind of need him to shit himself. Like that, he needs to poop himself. It's like the torture element is is what was there. I don't know. We'll see. He's gonna be mad. I, Clemmer, competitive Clemmer is as angry as anything gets. Um, whether it's the pro day last week in Chicago, the dozen, whether it's like something like this, he gets angry. So I'm curious to see his his reaction on this it's one of three streams we've had the last few days uh jerry buckets jerry after dark he attempted to break caitlin clark's record jerry after clark which she liked the tweet by the way um she saw it uh he had to score match her record of uh 3685 points minimum 509 threes 762 free throws he said he could do it in 10 hours he did it in six he couldn't miss jerry is a fucking bucket man i i, I, I honestly the Knicks are so banged up. I would honestly sign Jerry to a ten day contract until Jalen Brunson comes back. He is when I when I saw he had he had like he had like three hundred and nine or two. I, I don't know whatever he had like he had an absurd amount of threes. And I actually because I I was not watching for a little bit. And I actually rewound. I'm like that has to be a graphic error. I go there's no way he's hit this many threes in the last like thirty five minutes. It's no, crazy. Jer Jerry's one of the like unsuspecting little athletes. Like. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see it here, just not even on camera. He, at the combine, he can scoot a little bit running. You wouldn't yeah. think that. Uh, he can fucking piss on a golf ball, like straight too. Um, and then I, I saw him hit six threes. Like he, he can show. He's just a little. Yeah. The best yeah. he said, the, the layups were the hardest part. He, he was draining them from deep. For someone who's also a short like Jerry, layups are, we don't do layups. <laughs> like I, I was getting shit a few weeks back for, uh, I don't know. Oh, Chris Berman, when he was in the office announcing, like, I had a breakaway. I'm like, absolutely not. I don't take layups. The angle for us is like you're trying to shoot up the Burj Khalifa. It's it's awful. Yeah. So we fair. don't do layups. We set picks. We shoot threes. That's it. So I I, I empathize with not I, I sympathize with Jerry on that one. We don't we don't take layups. Layups are no goes for us. Uh, yeah, it was uh pretty impressive and just kind of was over really quick out of nowhere um which hell that's awesome for jerry that was incredible stuff um, that was the shortest stream we've had which is crazy. I, I just and he was challenged by big cat big cat's like if he quits this stream this show's over i'm canceling it i'll come finish the challenge jerry like i was like i could i couldn't and like i knew he was good actually the 10 hours felt like pretty reasonable but this was like he was like How hot as a blow you, what how do you think it would take you a long time a long time i i would i would like redemption on my horrible yak challenge like that was that was a, a, a cavalcade of bad things but it would take me it'd take me a long time a long long time i think many people a long time yeah six hours is crazy uh 
However, it's not as crazy as the other stream. Uh, Kirk Minahan's producer, Jack Coleman, who used to work just at Barstool as like stool scenes guy, uh, randomly in the middle of Kirk's show the other day. I'll give you a little backstory. Coleman claims to be a sports fan. He has a New York Yankees license plate. But for a while now, Kirk has uncovered that he just doesn't know sports. He knows the Knicks. He knows the NBA a little bit, but that's kind of it. He has a Yankees license plate, but he doesn't know who Joe Torre is. I'll just leave it at that. Crazy, crazy. How do you not? Um, I mean... So the other day, someone on the show, I think it might have been Blind Mike, made a comment about Barry Bonds. And, oh, no, they are talking about Caitlin Clark, about who the real king of, her, Maravich, king of points, whatever. And they mm-hmm. mentioned Bonds. Like, Coleman might have mentioned as a joke, like, oh, the king, Barry Bonds. And Kirk said, Kirk made one of the biggest mistakes of his life. He said, name the top 10 all-time home run leaders. Um, 36 hours later... <laughs> Colvin finally got Jim Tomey after giving him the name Jim, by the way, and the letter T and accepting Tomei and talking to his wife on the phone and looking at a picture of him. Uh, he didn't have it for hours. Uh, I think Kirk saw like this needs this needs to end. He gave as many hints as possible. The other one was Frank Robinson. He had a board with names. It was a disaster. He doesn't know sports. He, he just doesn't. He's not a base, especially baseball. Um, it took him a long time to get a couple guys on the list. He didn't know who Rafael Palmero was. Um, he I also like some of the guesses were crazy, like like Rico Laramie, just like names that aren't people, <laughs> let alone baseball players. Um, so yeah, it's it's that that that's my that's my explainer on that disaster. Unbelievable though. I only really kind of got Jim Tome. He said Tome. I that's, no, that's acceptable. I say Tome, Jim Tome. You're sp- but see, like you're saying it because I know you know how it's spelled and how it looks. Like, yeah, he was saying it. Uh, yeah, I, I know Gentleman Jim a little bit. Um, I'm hoping to hunt with Gentleman Jim and the Wells family this fall. They really friends, yeah. Uh, and he's a he's the president of the or president, he's like the president's right hand man of the White Sox right now. Uh, saw him down last week at Arizona, but uh, but Frank Robinson's the one that it would have taken me. I wouldn't have needed a hint for that one, probably. But aside from that, like, it's a pretty easy top 10. You hear these guys, like, if you don't hear them daily just watching baseball now, then you've heard about them in just pop culture references throughout the course of time. So I think most just sports fans could get, like, an easy five or seven of those just without even really being baseball fans. People were like, oh, it's going to pop into a head at some point. Like, no, 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 no. Like, I saw your tweet. I got to say is. Yankees license plate doesn't know who Joe Torre is. That's all you needed to know. Right. And did that, did that get you really upset as a Indians fan or a former Indians fan? I mean, yes? Jim Tomey is my favorite athlete of all time. Like, I like sports because my dad's from that area. I think Tomey lived in the area my dad grew up too. And, like, I am, I am like, I, as a, like, I cried when Jim Tomey went to the Phillies. Like, he is my favorite athlete of all time. So, that made it a little like more ridiculous, but then like, but then, but then like he gets like Jake Cyborg. So like, how can you not laugh at that? So it's like, Clemmer <laughs> uh, Clemmer got it in like three minutes, I think, and he's Frank Robinson was the last one he got. Frank the Tank got it in twenty six seconds, which was just hilarious <laughs> to watch. It's, but it is like that's all you need to know about Barstool. Like, there's so many just weird brains here, and I kind of now question every interaction i've had with coleman because coleman i'd see him in new york we'd watch the Knicks streams together he's a Knicks fan and i'm like did he even know who patrick ewing was like i don't know what to make of this the, all the short porch guys are like he must have just been faking until he made it because he helped them with stuff and he like talked his way to make it seem like he knew what he's doing. if you don't know joe tory though i mean dave what are we talking about here i mean uh, that's how, how old is coleman 25 yeah i mean that's he lived through enough of he was complaining oh, on the Kirk Manahan show a few weeks ago that his friends didn't invite him back to play fantasy baseball this year. It's like, I wonder why. <laughs> you don't know any of the players. Um, Dave just tweeted, now this will be good. I can't wait for Clemmer to come out and be told nobody was watching him for the last two days. He was just talking to himself. <laughs> Which, if anyone follows through on things, it's Dave Portnoy. That stream will not come back on. That will absolutely be shut off and will not come back on. Um, last thing, Antonio Brown, I don't know. Does he work for Barstool now? I, I, trying to, I think he will be in due time. 
Yeah, I think it's inevitable at this point. We were, t- um, we were talking about this yesterday, too, that Louis C.K. thing with Cracker. It's like, I wish I could be offended. Like, there's his spit on it. Yeah, that he keeps calling everyone here Crackers, which he's he's not. I mean, he's, he's we do was, have a lot of white employees. And then he said only two uh, two people worked there, Wallow and Gilly, which also, shout out Pat Bev, put some respect on Pat Bev's name. Sure. Um, other people as well. But then he saw a video. With, this is where it's pretty funny. He saw a, vi- a video of Za. With the storm chasers, and he said, I was wrong, make that two and a half. Uh, and then he tweeted, Make it th- very funny, <laughs> very funny. And then he said, Make it three and a half tomorrow. Which I'm like, Did we hire him? It wouldn't shock me. I honestly, nothing shocks me at this company anymore. I mean, just think about the stuff we've been talking about with these streams and all the nonsense. We haven't brought up Mincy in this, this episode, right? Like, if, and if, all the and, crazy if the shit. stream came back on and Antonio Brown was with Clemmer, like, I wouldn't be so, like, I'd be no, like, that's, no that's normal. I, the only thing that stops me from thinking Antonio Brown will get a job here is literally because he came out against Brady. He's been like anti Brady and like, Dave fought on that wall too many times to have a guy who's anti Brady let him into the house because then you're kind of thumbing your nose at Brady. And I think that's it. like Brady, Belichick, Kraft are the three people you can't have come out against and get hired here. Yeah. Just like, like if he just walked in the frame with Dave right now, it wouldn't be shot. But like I just like, yeah, it's just anyway. No, I'm sure that's already find it in the works to get him here. The only thing is, is he, I know we have like the whack packs to real life cast member, like, employment staff here he might be a little too much of a loose cannon where <laughs> yeah, yes. like, ah, maybe not like he's not a loose cannon like mincy world just like harmlessly say something incredibly dumb and get maybe the potential entire company brought down like this guy might actually do something like to hurt someone and and then he's it's not former NFL player Antonio Brown did that. It's Barstool Sports employee Antonio exactly. Brown did that. And that's yeah. a real fucking problem. Because we, we've lost, right. you know, bloggers who had that. And then it's like, boom, they're gone. They get cut. Yep. And Antonio. But it is kind of funny if Dave opens the whack pack athlete stable of, of Barstool, right? Like, like we have, like, legitimate athletes. Or shout out um Playoff Lenny, right? Playoff Lenny was kind of one of those guys. Pat Bev is a legitimate athlete. Uh, Antonio Brown. Pat Bev, Pat Bev is is a goaded Barstool employee. Pat Bev, I've never heard one bad thing about Pat Bev. He might be <laughs> no, the absolute, is, I mean, he, he's the absolute best. Like Pat, I I've spoken with him a billion times off camera at this point. He is one, he gets it for like for Barstool purposes. Like he'll be like, oh yo, bring a camera out. And like he's not one of those guys that's, you know, I'm in the NBA. I'm gonna come record my show and leave. He fucks around with like the content side. And he's just awesome, dude. And he's super he, fucking fun. His demeanor is as if the NBA is his side job. Like he works at Barstool and he happens to play in the NBA. It like that's his like demeanor. That, yeah. It does seem it's, like it's, that. The, it's happen. awesome. Yeah. When his playing job or playing days are over, he'll have a job here for as long as he'd like, I'd imagine. Yeah. I, bet he, I bet he can yeah. fit the Wi-Fi situation out there. You go, Pat, our <laughs> Wi-Fi's not working. He'll be like, I get my what guy. If that's out. why Antonio Brown quits. Like he he comes in and he's like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Wi-Fi at an internet company, the Wi-Fi, it doesn't work. Um, that's it for the rundown. Shout out to High Noon. Shout out to Manasquan basketball team. Champions, champions in our mind. Something good is going to come for them. Maybe like a GoFundMe or something. Yeah, I could also see like I don't know, just like honored at like a Sixers game. So I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, that's it. All right. Uh, we will um talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. Catch everybody soon.